So now that we've taken a look at the popular games around this time, you can see that space combat sims really weren't on the radar at all. For a comparison of what Wing Commander was going to go up against visually, let's look at some of the flight simulators that were released at the time. So these games were released in the same year as Wing Commander. Uh, they may not have been hugely successful, but they were considered good flight simulators. This is LHX Attack Chopper, published by the now gigantic Electronic Arts and developed by Brent Iverson. He brought in his expertise from his service in the US Army and would develop mainly combat-based flight simulators like Chuck Yeager's Air Combat and Advanced Tactical Fighter. Uh, but let's get back to LHX. The first thing to notice about LHX and the other two games is how the engine uses very plain polygons. Uh, there was no shading on these polygons, but we're talking about a time where 286s were the most common Intel chips out there, uh, with 386s just being over the horizon at this point. Also, when you look at the environment, there isn't much detail at all. It's difficult to tell how fast you're moving or even how high off the ground you are. Even when you look at the model of the LHX, there's not much real detail besides those provided by the shape of the polygons. And the effects probably leave a lot to be desired, even for those days. A10 Tank Killer. This was released by Dynamics, which used to be a developer for EA, uh, but was then bought out by Sierra around this time. You still see the solid fill polygons, but there are some photorealistic images thrown in for the cockpit, which at the time added some extra immersiveness, uh, even though it meant realizing that you played through the game as Holland Oats. You can already see that this game engine was a little more advanced. The movement is much more smooth, and there's more detail in the terrain, so that you actually had a good sense of motion. Your co-pilot would even tell you if you'd done something right, or wrong, or even some random sexual innuendo. Even though this was one of my favorite games at the time, there's, there's not much to say about it now. You can see the added effect of a light source on the model, and the sense of speed was even greater here than in other games, but it still left something to be desired. Then there's Microsoft's gigantic footprint in flight simulators. For those of you not familiar with this series, it held your feet to the fire as far as knowing the ins and outs of flying a plane. Going to Libya and blowing up tanks wouldn't be the challenge. Your greatest foe here would be landing at O'Hare International. It was one of the few flight simulators that had the actual locations and those distances to scale. If you wanted to fly from New York to San Francisco, be prepared for the supreme challenge of perfectly level flying five You could even find the USS Nimitz and land on it, although I wouldn't recommend that. Even though it was Microsoft's fourth major iteration in this series, it was still a mix of being realistic and, well, not so realistic. I mean, if you just pulled up sharply, then you would stall, and that makes sense. But then you could do this fun maneuver all day long. Actually, one of the more interesting options was being able to create your own aircraft, but don't think that you were somehow released from the physics engine. You could certainly make something with gigantic wings and an incredible amount of thrust, but it wouldn't be as easy to make it fly in the traditional sense. So where does all of this leave us? Even Chris Roberts, the lead designer, had only a fleeting idea about what he was about to unleash onto the gaming public. As we've talked about already, the game catalog had been without the once plentiful space combat scene for several years. This allowed Wing Commander not only to be a new, engaging experience because of brilliant execution in its own terms, 
also as a seemingly lost experience for genre-starved fans. Visually, the game would break out of the mold of solid fill polygons and into pre-rendered bitmaps with stunning detail. On the artistic side, the game's visual style, while cartoony, was subtle and more true to life than the earlier clumsy attempts at looking real with photographs, which brought to light the limitations of current graphics capabilities. More importantly though, it was able to set a somber tone appropriate to the genre as opposed to reeking of amateurism. The game also cast a dominating influence on the fledgling audio market. In a time where the majority of home computers came with the dreaded tinny sounding internal PC speakers, Winkmander brought with its tried and true combination of space combat and dynamic orchestral soundtrack a compelling impetus for aftermarket PC sound cards. As if this wasn't enough, Roberts and company wouldn't settle in just generating evolutions in the current gaming genres. Wing Commander would also be the first successful execution of the interactive movie. As a natural extension of the want for a cinematic experience, Roberts laid the foundation for immersive gaming, which would be the hallmark of the series. All of the accomplishments in the current climate in PC gaming would lead to a critical and financial success never before seen by Origin Systems, the company responsible for the venerable Ultimate series. While the artists were plying the final gloss, most gamers were unaware of the game that would not only be groundbreaking, but breathtaking. <laughs>